You came to the United States to work and I came to vacation. Look at the difference. She is the one that maintains me. That is why I don't work, because the government gives her what belongs to her, to my daughter, for being an American citizen. Capiche? I have no need to work because, well, guys, like few of you, this little princess, for being American, already receives a lot of money. Capiche? The trick is to have children in the United States. Here is the gold mine. The gold mine. Meanwhile, Mayor Eric Adams is rolling out a money-saving program. He claims it's money-saving to help migrants. Adams' uh, debit card program for migrants will reportedly give migrants up to $10,000 each in taxpayer money with no ID check, no restrictions, and no fraud control. Well, <laughs> I guess Trump was right after all when he said they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, and you know what else he said. So now Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, is changing course. After nearly two years of having migrants bust to his city, of having all of these migrants come from Venezuela and all over the world, China, Haiti, Middle East, say they want to go to New York. Eric Adams is saying we need to put a stop to this. We need to end this sanctuary city status. So there has been a very notable crime spree in New York City. We had seven guys, I think it was seven guys, stomp out cops in broad daylight. Can you imagine that? We haven't seen stuff like this in the United States. Where in broad daylight, people will have the gall, people will be so brazen to stomp out police officers in the middle of the city in front of everybody like it's nothing because this is what happens in these corrupt banana republics in these third world countries these filthy corrupt countries like the cartels in certain parts of mexico things going on in venezuela is extremely corrupt and we have gangs running amok in these countries doing whatever the hell they want and these same gangs are now in new york city beating up people they went to some luxury retail store in the mall to rob them beat up an employee a female employee knocked her out, took their stuff, and walked out like it was nothing. We just saw the incident down there in UGA, down there in Athens, Georgia. The migrant who left New York went down to Georgia and brutally deleted a nursing student at that college. And Democrats have been protecting these people. And even right now, they're still protecting these people because Eric Adams is standing on an island of Democrats. He's standing alone trying to end this sanctuary city status but he has a lot of opposition in New York and it's probably not gonna happen, but let's listen to what he said. I don't believe people who are violent in our city and commit repeated crimes should have the privilege of being in our city. Some people have a different belief than that. You know, that is my belief. And if I had my way of, if you are repeatedly committing crimes in our city, uh, like the individual did a, a serious crime and then got out and went and assaulted and did, uh, did a robbery. Of uh, You don't have the right to be in our city and tarnish those overwhelming number who are here following the rules. Uh, that is what I believe. So like I said, I don't know the exact makeup of the city council in New York, but there's already been statements from these guys that it's not going to happen. They're not going to let Eric Adams get what he wants. That's why when Eric Adams first talked about that, he was more bold talking about, yeah, we need to end this. This is terrible. But now he's saying, well, if I get what I want, because he knows that he doesn't have the political power to do it. And he knows if he pushed too hard, they'll get rid of him, just like the New York Democrats got rid of Andrew Cuomo. But these guys are saying, well, we know that some of these guys stump out cops and they delete people and they beat up old ladies to take their phones and they're still in scooters and they're out there selling their own women on the streets and doing all types of stuff. But they haven't been convicted yet. They haven't been convicted, so they should stay. We don't want to rip apart families. So seven guys stump out cops get out because of the corrupt trash, no cash bail policy. I get what they're trying to do because you don't want to have inequality when it comes to crime where rich people can just pay the city and get out while wow, poor people can't but there's some flaws to that y'all need to work on that so you got guys stumping out cops walking out and then just leaving the city 
flipping off the people as they leave the jail. These Democrat council members said, well, they haven't been convicted. They were just arrested and charged. They haven't been convicted. We don't want to just deport them because then we'll just rip apart their families. <laughs> These guys are trash. But what we're going to talk about is something I've been talking about for months. They have been fleecing these taxpayers. They have been abusing taxpayer money. These politicians and these contractors, they've been getting rich because Eric Adams sends out these contracts to clean laundry. I always joke about how they spend millions of taxpayer dollars to wash the dirty draws of illegal immigrants. So I joke about it because it's ridiculous, but it is happening. And I say, who does Eric Adams know? Is he related to these people? Does he have a percentage of that business? Because what the hell is going on? All of these hotels that are spending all this money. So Eric Adams, his administration has been giving out all of these contractors, all of these people, all of this money has been spent, all this taxpayer money has been spent. And there's no bid. So who are these people? Who do you know? Like when he's giving out that debit card to these migrants up to $10,000 allegedly, they're saying, well, it's a black man who owns the company, the financial companies that's going to distribute the cards. Does Eric Adams know that man? Is he getting a kickback? Is he getting a piece of that company? So normally, in a less corrupt way, when a government, like a city government like New York, the U.S. government, whatever, when they need to have work done that they can't do themselves, they put it up for a bid, which means a bunch of companies that are capable of doing it, we're providing that service, they all come in and say, well, for this amount, we can do the service, and everybody put in their bid, and usually the government picks the lowest one that could do the job but in eric adams case he's just been picking people without putting it up for a bit so he said i need a laundry service that can handle a boatload thousands and thousands of people's laundry every week so i'm gonna pick this one no it should have been a bunch of laundry services in the new york area who said well we'll do it and then they picked the lowest one who could deliver a decent service but no eric adams just hands picks people i'm like who did you hand pick did you know these people are you getting some money from these people? Because it looks extremely corrupt. But let's read a little bit. New York City taxpayers have been fleeced for millions of dollars with emergency no-bid contracts awarded by Mayor Eric Adams' administration to buy services for illegal immigrants and audit fines. A report released Tuesday by NYC Comptroller Brad Lander analyzed four emergency asylum seeker-related contracts held by different city agencies and found that prices paid very wildly for similar services across the four countries. The Adams administration also paid significantly higher rates to outside contractors than what the city would usually pay to existing shelter vendors and public sector employees, according to the audit. The city agencies charged with serving asylum seekers entered into these costly no-bid contracts at the same time that they were facing budget cuts and hiring freezes, Lander said. So they're overpaying for all of these services. They're overpaying for security guards, for managers, for people who handle the asylum seekers, quote unquote, asylum seekers as they enter the city, for people who are cooking for them, folding their clothes, they're paying higher than what the market rate is. But then they come and say, well, we don't have money. We need the feds to give us money. We need the New York state to give us money. We need money, money, money. But you're wasting money by giving up contracts to who? Who are these people? Again, I'm going to keep asking that question because it seems so corrupt. The analysis of just one site found that hiring new city employees instead of staffers supplied by the vendor would deliver as much as $50 million in savings in a single year, even when factoring in a cost of fringe benefits for the city. So where could that $50 million be spent? Because you have cut the budgets of the police officers of parks, of the garbage collecting people. You cut the school. You cut funding for the schools. But you sitting here burning up $50 million just in this instance alone. The current practice is a recipe for fiscal waste. Terrible management. And this is who y'all New York City voters put in power. Because why? <laughs> but I'm not even going to get into that right now. According to the Comptroller, as of November 2023, the city has awarded 340 unique asylum seeker contracts held across 14 different city agencies, representing an estimated value of $5.7 billion. Money 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 so when y'all in new york city are crying about whatever services y'all are crying about the homeless y'all are crying about your schools being run down you guys are crying about how terrible it is the dmv is understaffed and you waiting in there all day or you have to set an appointment for the dmv and the appointment's like two months out because you just spent 5.7 billion dollars on illegal immigrants 
and you're still spending that money. And that's only with contractors. You spend even more when you factor in what the city supplies itself. The audit examined four emergency contacts, each held by a different city agency to supply staffing at commercial hotels, welcome centers, and humanitarian emergency response and relief centers. Three of the contracts were selected without any competitive bidding. Yep. So Eric Adams and his people are just saying, okay, we choose this people. We choose this group because I might have some percentage of that company. I might know them. They might be related to me. We might go to church together. So I want to boost up their company. I'm going to use taxpayer money to give a bid to my family member, my friend, or somebody I'm in business with. Who's going to give me a kickback? That's exactly what's been going on. These people are getting rich and then they'll go out there and cry. We don't have money, all the migrant crisis, but I'm pretty sure a lot of these people, especially these contractors, they love Greg Abbott. They're like, please keep them coming because we are getting filthy rich off of these taxpayer suffers in New York. So let's skip down in this paragraph. Adams, a Democrat, declared a state of emergency in October 2022 to ramp up shelter operations and house migrants under the city's right to shelter law. That process involved awarding emergency contracts to different vendors for meals, medical care, and site staffing to meet migrants' needs. Now let's get into some of this money. Talking about site staffing, emergency care. So let's see how much money they've been spending. Obviously, we all remember Eric Adams saying that Biden needs to front him $12 billion. He went on CBS News saying it's going to cost $12 billion over three years. And then he had a meeting, I think it was at City Hall, where he said these New York City illegal immigrants will destroy the city. They're costing $12 billion. So we know about that. So let's look at this paragraph here. And one egregious example, a Texas-based disaster firm called SLSCOLP charged hourly rates that were 237% higher than a similar contract awarded to the SA Group LLC by a different department, while .go, a migrant shelter firm, charged another department 146% more than SA for the same position to audit found. So you just completely wasting money. Like you're spending for these services way more than you should. First of all, it should be zero because these illegal immigrants shouldn't be here in the first place. You shouldn't spend a dime on them. I mean, I guess you can spend a dime to send them back to hell where they came from. But if you're going to be spending money like that to take care of them, to get suckered, you're spending more than you need to spend. For example, this company here for offsite managers, over $200 an hour. <laughs> Wow. Security guards at these migrant shelters, which I don't know they've been doing a good job because I've seen some of these migrants having fights in the cafeteria, throwing food, flipping over tables. And one migrant even got deleted. Y'all remember that story there, but $90 an hour for security guards. So all of that money doesn't go directly to the security guard paycheck. They hire a security company, then they'll pay that company $90 an hour to have security there. And then the security guard themselves, they get a piece of the $90 an hour. And then a company that hires the security guard, they get a piece. It's a lot, man. It's a lot right here. $78.99 an hour from this company and $50 an hour from this company for security guards. This is for each security guard. Then they're saying this company right here, they only charge about $24 for a security guard. You paying one company $90 an hour for one security guard. When this company said, well, we got security for 24 an hour. And Eric guy was like, nah, I don't know y'all. We can't get enough corrupt money by hiring you guys. I need to pay more. Peace officers employed by the Department of Homeless Services only cost the city $29.80 an hour, a rate 40% more affordable than a least expensive asylum seeker security contract. And this one here is going to be insane. So this same big money contract, we keep seeing the same name and I need to investigate who the hell are these people and what's their relationship with Adams and his people. $1,500. This is for a day, a day's work, eight hours, $1,500 for each shelter supervisor that comes out to over $185 an hour. Dot go supervisors were contracted at $2,000 a day. Build on a 24 hour basis while the supervisors are only on site 12 hours a day. So these people at Doc Go said, we're going to charge you $2,000 a day for a supervisor, but the supervisor is only going to work half of the day. But the 12 hours that the supervisor isn't there, we still need to get paid for that. I mean, insane, insane. So 1500 a day for a supervisor, 2000 a day for a supervisor. Well, you can get a supervisor here for 550 a day. So you're just paying way more. The Comptroller's office estimate that certain staffing costs to provide services to asylum seekers at the Rowe Hotel were approximately two and a half times higher 
under an emergency contract with the same company again than if the city had delivered those same services with city employees. The audit found that the city's department failed to communicate with each other to keep tabs on prices and mitigate costs. Well, because one, they're incompetent and two, they're corrupt. That's all that's going on. Why do they need to talk to one another? Why do they need to communicate about how much various agencies are spending when it doesn't matter? The taxpayers are going to continue to vote Democrat. They're going to continue to get sucker and these people are going to get rich. And will anything come of this? Will these people be held accountable? Will these people be locked away? for corruption, for fraud, for stealing the taxpayers' money? I don't think so, but I believe it when I see it. And here it talks about Eric Adams facing criticism over that $53 million contract, the one where he plans to give debit cards, cash basically to illegal immigrants to allegedly go buy food and baby clothes, but basically it's gonna finance the gangs. It's gonna go down to the cartels, it's gonna to go to these super gangs in New York, and it's gonna fund them. And these idiots are, so worried about their own money and their own corruption, spending all this money. They're not thinking, well, can't the gangs get their hands on this money? <laughs> and again, Eric Adams didn't even put that up for a bit. He was criticized. He hired a finance company to be the middleman to hand out those debit cards. And he showed the guy's face, said, look, it's Black History Month. The guy who owns this company or has the majority share in this company, he's black. So you should be happy with that. We're going to steal your money right in your face and waste your money while we get rich. But remember, we're hiring a black guy. <laughs> so, yep, these guys are corrupt as hell. Eric Adams, he wants to end Sanctuary City. <laughs> I seriously doubt that's going to happen. The DNC ain't going to let that happen. The higher up Democrats, they're not going to let that happen. And even down to the Democrats in the city council, they will get rid of Adams before they let him get rid of that sanctuary city status they are aware of cops getting beat down of old ladies getting beat up of people getting robbed of these people selling box of carjackings increasing the gangs in new york city are getting more powerful the city council they are well aware of that but they're saying well we can't deport these criminals because then we'll be separating families <laughs> man it's crazy so good luck new york with being fleeced by eric adams and these democrats and I'm pretty sure in November, you guys are going to go out and droves and vote blue again. So after November, once we look at the numbers, how y'all voted, and if y'all voted vast majority Democrat, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear any more complaining. So let me know what you guys think about this. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.